Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Thanks for joining me for today's CCNA 5-Minute Video Boot Camp on Root Guard. We're also going to be running quite a few STP commands in this section, so it's kind of a combination of a boot camp and a command reference. And for that reason, I just want to be up front with you. This is going to be a little more of a 15-minute video boot camp. I want you to see Root Guard in action and not just know the theory and a couple, not really gotchas, but things you need to see on live Cisco switches. So that's just what we're going to do here. And in today's video boot camp, among other things, we will discuss when Root Guard just might come in handy in a production network and in a lab. And speaking of a lab, we've got one that we're going to run without root guard and with root guard, where we start with two switches, end up with three, and we'll check some root bridge elections along the way. And we'll close up with a success summary, a couple of bullet points for you to remember as you prepare for success on exam day. Because the thing is, you and I as the network admins, we sometimes go to a lot of trouble to determine the root bridge for a particular VLAN or VLANs. You know, sometimes we don't care. Maybe it's a smaller network. You know, all the switches are the same model, same capabilities, maybe we don't care, but sometimes we do. And part of your CCNA routing and switching studies will be, you know, how to change the results of a root bridge election in several different ways. And I think in the second half of this one today, we'll see one way to do that. But once we get the route that we want, it is imperative to remember that the root bridge election is an ongoing event. It's not that the root bridge is elected and then that's it. Uh, it has to continually defend its title, if you will. And if another switch comes along that has a lower bridge ID, because that's the value we're looking at in a root bridge election, if another switch gets added on, it's got a lower bid, it could become the root or would become the root for a VLAN or VLANs. And maybe that is not what you and I, the network admins, want to have happen. So we're going to start off with this simple two-switch network. And you can see that switch one there on the left is the root for VLAN 1. I only have the default VLANs in this particular lab, so we're working strictly with VLAN 1 in this exercise. And switch two, therefore, would be the non-root. So let's go ahead and bring up the lab and see exactly where we are. We're on switch two. So let's run show spanning VLAN 1. And, you know, trust my diagrams, but always verify. Trust, but verify everything. So we've got the show spanning VLAN 1 command. And there are four different ways to tell whether you're on the root switch or not. And look for a video that I've made. Actually, I'm going to make it later today, naming all four ways. But the one way I want to show you right now is that under root ID, you do not see the phrase, this bridge is the root. So that tells us right there that we're not on the root, so I'm really quite sure switch one is the root. Uh, it better be. So let's run show spanning VLAN 1. And we do indeed see the magic phrase, this bridge is the root, so all is well. We do also have a gig ethernet interface live on this particular switch, but we're not using that in our exercise. We're strictly working with these fast ethernet interfaces. So, so far everything is just exactly as I told you it would be. Switch one, switch two, switch one's the root for VLAN one, and it will be the root in perpetuity or until another switch comes along that might take over. Now this particular trunk between switches two and three is not yet established. Everything is in place for it and all I need to do to make it happen right now is to open 205 on switch two because that interface is not open right now. So that's why switch three hasn't taken over yet. But I want you to see live that that is what should happen and we will definitely double check it because switch three, I can tell you, does have a lower bid than switch one. So if we open 205 on switch 2 right now, let's see what happens. Let's head over to switch 2. And we should get a couple of messages here. There's one. There's this first link message we want. And there's the line protocol message. So the first line, interface fast ethernet 205 change state to up. That means the physical state of the interface is now up. When you see the line protocol mentioned here or in a show interface command, that means you're talking about the logical state of the interface. So physically and logically the interface is up and all is well. Or is it? Let's go over to switch three and do a show spanning VLAN one. And we do indeed see this bridge is the root. Even though its port here is still in learning, this bridge has already taken over as the root for VLAN 1. So we'll come back and make sure. There we go. We've gone to forwarding mode. And all is well unless you're switch 1, who was the root. And we're going to go over to switch 1 right now and run show spanning VLAN 1. Could have used my up arrow there and will next time. And you can see that you know this bridge is the root is no longer here. So switch three has indeed taken over 
as the root. Now exactly why did that happen? We need to know why it happened in order to use root guard effectively. And what happened was is in, when this trunk was established, a superior BPDU was sent from switch 3 to switch 2. And a superior BPDU is a configuration BPDU that contains a bid that will result in a change in the root bridge election outcome. Switch 3 is now going to end up being the root as soon as all the other switches see this particular BPDU. So that's why it is called superior. It is proving switch 3's superiority, which is great from switch 3's point of view, but not so good from switch 1. So let's say that we do not want to let that happen. We want switch 1 to be the root no matter what. And we're going to go back to switch 2 right now and close that interface because I want you to see this in action when we open it. So we're right back to where we were. Let's quickly go over to switch one. Actually, let's stay here for just a moment. We know that uh, two's taken over as the route for right now because the election's taken, taking place. That's pretty cool. But let's see if it's still the route. It still is the route. And now you see that it is not. So that's an excellent real world lesson there. When you change your topology, you might see a bridge take over as the root for a few seconds. But then when we went back, ran it twice again, uh, about 10 seconds later, it was no longer the root. So if we go to one, I said I wasn't going to type that again. There's this bridge is the root, and we are back where we were. So what we want to do then is configure switch two so that if any superior BPDU comes in on that particular interface, that particular port, and this is a port level command, an interface level command, uh, what's going to happen is switch 2 will do something to prevent switch 3 from taking over as the root. That's where root guard comes in. So what we're going to do is enable FAST 205 with root guard, and then, especially for your exam, you need to take very careful note of what happens here when that interface sees a superior BPDU. We will do that in just a moment. Please pardon me a quick commercial announcement. My new CCNA video boot camp is now live on Udemy. And the one thing with Udemy is that I love them, but they don't make forever coupons anymore. So here's the deal. Uh, you can use that link, the bit.ly September 12 bucks link to get in for that price uh, throughout September but the coupon is not forever. So if you need the latest coupons, you see all those people in that nice server room over there and the guys in a nice suit and you know, no, no Coke bottles or coffee cups or anything on the counters there. Well, that's not like my server room, but I digress. Uh, they're looking for the best price on this course. You don't need to do that. Just go to Chris Bryant coupons as a bit.ly link and every single day between 7 and 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I update that page and that gives you the latest coupon. So if you're watching this after September 2020, first, I'm glad to have you here. Second, visit that page and that will give you a coupon to get at least 40 to 50% off the regular retail price of the course. So you get a real world education, a world class education, and you save yourself a few bucks at the same time. So let's head back and see what we're going to do. Let's go back one there with enabling with root guard because we got to enable the interface with root guard before we see what happens with root guard. Let's go over to 5, and that is our switch 2. So let's go config T interface 205. Again, this is the interface facing the switch that might take over, that we know will take over. You don't want to put it on 204 because, you know, facing the root. You don't want that. So actually, let's go ahead and bring that back up. And let's say you got here, it's like, okay, I got to use iOS help to find this command. So it's root guard, okay? So it must begin with an R, right? You know it doesn't the way I'm saying that. But I can prove it because the only two things that begin with R there are Armon and routing. So using my mastery of the alphabet and thinking, well, maybe it's guard. Uh, we see that there is no command here that begins with a G, so that's not it. So that's why you got to remember that this is a spanning tree feature, and the command has to start again on the interface, and it's going to start with spanning tree or just spanning if that's what you want to put. And now we have something that looks like a guard change in interfaces, spanning tree guard mode. So it sounds like we're on the right track. And we have three choices, and one of them, hallelujah, is root. Loop guard we're going to cover in another five minute video boot camp. None, you can use that to negate either loop or root if you've already put those on. And we just might do that at the end of the video, just see what happens. And 
Finally, root, which is what we want. So very important to note the command is spanning tree guard root, and it is configured at the interface level, and it is facing a switch that you don't want to become the root. So let's go ahead and enable it, and then I'm going to do a no shut. And the thing is, before I open this, you could put this on an interface that currently isn't even connected to a switch, you know, as part of your security plan. I mean, it's like, okay, if someone ever connects a switch to this baby and opens it up, I don't want it to become the root. So not only am I going to shut the interface down, I'm going to go ahead and put root guard on it. So that's another good use of root guard. Let's go ahead and do no shut. And now we play the waiting game. We won't be waiting long, I suspect. There's the physical state change state to up. By golly, that didn't take long. And now the line protocol is up. So this is interesting because the reason that I make such a point of, you know, here's our physical state, here's our logical state. First off, if you're new to Cisco routers, I'm glad you're here. And that's an important concept that this means the physical state of the interface line protocol, the logical. But notice that almost immediately after the interface went live physically and before we got the line protocol message, we've got a root guard block going on. And it's spelled, the message spells it right out, man. Root guard blocking 205 on VLAN 1. And that's the only VLAN we have or we'd be getting multiple messages, one for each VLAN. So the thing is, though, you know, with some security features, when you see a violation, uh, port security, if you haven't gotten to that in your studies yet, don't sweat it. But with port security, the, the default, you know, is to shut the port down if a violation occurs. But here, we've had a violation with root guard. Obviously, root guard blocking port 205, that's serious stuff. But notice that we have not gotten a console message about the interface being shut down or about the line protocol going down. So let's run show interface serial, excuse me, fast, nice try, 205. And right at the top, you know, up and up. So this is interesting. Where's, where's the blocking coming in? Where, where's the guarding of the root coming in is what I'm saying. And for that, you need to run show spanning VLAN 1. And what you're going to see is this. Everything's going to look the same as far as your root ID and bridge ID. What you got to do is go down and check your ports. And all of a sudden, where we had something good, we now have something bad, broken. Broken is never good in our business. And we have an asterisk. And by golly, right at the end of the line, here's the description. And root inconsistent. This is exactly what happens to an interface. And you saw it very briefly on the screen here. I will bring it back up. That we enabled it with root guard. 205, we opened that interface, so switch 3 could send its superior BPDU in, and the second that happened, the port goes into what we call root inconsistent mode. So the interface is not actually shut down, it's fine physically and logically, but root inconsistent is going to stop it from allowing switch 3 to become the root. So how do we get rid of this? Well, the interesting thing here is that unlike other Cisco security features, this port will actually bring itself out of root inconsistent state without manual intervention if the superior BPDUs stop coming. Because those BPDUs are still coming in right now. Switch 3, Switch 3 doesn't even know this is happening really. It's still sending those configuration BPDUs over, but they're superior, so the port stays in root inconsistent mode. But if an inferior BPDU starts coming in, then root guard should allow the port to come out of root inconsistent state on its own because it's no longer threatened. It's going to see an inferior BPDU, which means the incoming bid is higher than that of the current root. And switch two is going to say, hey, I don't care about that. I'm just guarding the root. So let's see what happens here. We're going to go over to three, switch three that is. And we're going to use spanning VLAN one priority and I'm going to set the priority so that I know this switch can't become the root. And your bridge ID and STP, remember it's your default priority followed by the MAC address. And we know the default priority is 32768. So if I set this to 61440, for example, then you know the MAC address isn't even going to come into play. Also, it's a good idea for your exam to remember this. This is one of those odd commands where you can't just put in whatever number you want in the range that it gives you. You have to set it to increments of 4096. So I'm just going to go all the way up here. And as soon as I do this, I'm going to flip over to switch two. And let's see what happens here. It may take more than a few seconds. But now we have inferior BPDUs coming into switch two. And we'll see about how long it takes for that port to come out of root and consistent mode. 
The waiting is always the hardest part. I bet if I hit the elevator button, you know, it'll come again. There we go. As <laughs> soon as I mention it. So, you know, it took about 10 seconds or so, but we get a message, you know, root guard unblocked, root guard unblocking port 205 on VLAN 1. That's exactly what we wanted. The reason it's doing that, because it sees an inferior BPDU coming in from switch 3 instead of a superior BPDU. So let's go ahead over to switch 1 and run show spanning VLAN 1. And you can see indeed that this bridge is still the root. And we know in our hearts that switch 3 is not the root. But let's go ahead and run show spanning VLAN 1 here. And you will see that indeed it is not. And you also know the bridge priority shot up to 61441 overall because I set the priority to 61440. And it's going to add the VLAN number then with the system ID extension feature. So it's 61441 officially. Way too high to ever become the root on this particular network. A couple more things I want to show you here on switch 2. And the first one, I wanted to show you show interface, show spanning interface. And this, this command can be pretty handy for filtering the information out a little bit, especially if you have many entries when you run just show spanning VLAN 1. If you just want to see the spanning tree information about one particular command, excuse me, one particular interface, you can use show spanning interface fast to take care of that. Now, let's go out to one more command here. Spanning, one more reminder, guard and root, but this time I'm going to put none. And you can see immediately we get we do get a confirm root guard config change root guard disabled on port fast ethernet 205, but we don't see anything as far as the interface's physical or logical state because nothing changes there. But again, that's a good command to know as well, spanning guard none, to go ahead and take either root or loop guard off. Woo, whole lot going on there, right? A whole lot going on with, uh, with root guard and some other features that we worked in as well. So I hope you enjoyed this supersized edition of my five minute video bootcamp. Thanks again for coming by. And before you leave, I do have that success summary for you. Uh, root guard, just going over the basics again, protects the current root from being overthrown by a superior BPDU that comes in after the current root has already been named. The command is spanning guard root at the interface level. And we also saw while the port receiving the superior BPD remains up and up, and I know you know that means physically and logically, but I'm going to say it one more time, uh, it goes into root inconsistent mode, which prevents the triggering switch from becoming the root. And once the superior BPDUs co stop coming in, the port brings itself out of root inconsistent mode. Usually, you and I, the network admin, have to do some intervention there, and we'll be doing that in future video boot camps later this week, actually. But with this one particular feature, when all is well again, the port comes out of root and consistent mode on its own. Woo, this time I'm going to let you go. <laughs> I do hope you enjoyed this supersized version of the 5-Minute Video Boot Camp. I'm Chris Bryant. Thanks for joining me today. Hope I see you on Udemy, and I'll see you tomorrow on YouTube with another 5-Minute Video Boot Camp. See you there.